oils and butters are ruining your hair. You need to stop using oils and butters. Basically what I'm saying is watch this video first before you attempt to use oils and butters. There's so many videos out there right now with so many YouTubers coming out with the new miracle hair growth oil that's going to grow your hair overnight. It's going to grow your hair two inches in two weeks. It's going to grow your hair in a month. This new butter is going to change the game. Your hair is going to be like it's never been before. All I'm saying is wait a minute. Just watch this first because things can go completely wrong and you can destroy your hair i've written a couple of these tips very evenly spread out in detail every single point is important so make sure you stay all the way till the end if you don't know me my name is angelica i post videos twice a week every single week on wednesdays and sundays occasionally i do post a video on friday if that seems interesting to you consider subscribing the subscription button is right down there as well as the bell icon make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications every single time i post this is the current state of my hair it is pretty long i did have to trim about four or five inches because I took way too long to straighten my hair and trim off the dead end, but as you can see, my hair is flourishing and it feels and looks way healthier than ever before. Let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to start with butters. Very recently, there was a point when butters were way more popular than oils and I haven't really done a video about this because I really don't use butters, but I felt this time is a great time because I have noticed quite a few comments popping up on my videos, especially where I talk about oils or moisturizers and someone says, well, can I just use a butter instead? So I just want to make this clear. The main reason why oils and butters are bad for your hair and they don't work for your hair is not because oils and butters are bad products or that they are horrible for your hair. It's that you are not using them properly. Every single thing, if not used properly, will give you the exact opposite effect most of the time and it can give you horrible results. My favorite thing to use to describe this is chemical exfoliants in skincare. These products are amazing, but you have to use them exactly as directed on the bottle or even less sometimes. Now people will get that extremely, it's very popular on TikTok, it's kind of died down now, but there's this AHA by The Ordinary. It's not new, but it just got popular all of a sudden. It's very red, it kind of looks like blood. It's a very high, high concentration chemical exfoliant. And a lot of people were putting this on their face and then derma rolling and leaving this on for about 30 minutes and it was severely damaging like their skin they would literally get chemical burns that look like burns from fire it would give them like extreme breakouts they would have redness maybe develop some kind of rosacea and then soon after i'd see a lot of posts like don't use this product this product will damage your skin and it's like no you don't know how to use the product. That's a product that you should probably use once every week or every two weeks because it is that strong and you can see amazing results. But if you use it wrong, you'll literally burn your skin. It's the same with the oils and butters. It's not that they're necessarily bad, but most of the ways that people say you should use them are the wrong way and then they cause detriment to your hair and you start looking for other things because it seems like such an amazing natural product. There's no way that's what could be damaging your hair. So you start thinking, mm, it's probably my shampoo, it's probably my moisturizer. Meanwhile, the culprit is something you're making yourself or buying. So despite popular belief, butters are not moisturizers. I know it can be very confusing because butters kind of look like thick moisturizers, but it's not a thick moisturizer. It is a butter. And a butter is just basically a creamed or a liquid or a solidified version of an oil. It's the same thing, the formula just looks different. Butter, oil, it's just like the butter in the kitchen, okay? You can cook with olive oil, you can cook with sunflower oil, and no matter how cold it gets, they're still going to stay liquid. But if you get coconut oil or you get butter from the fridge and put it in the pan, it's going to melt. It will literally be the same thing as frying it in an oil. It's just going to be heavier than the regular oil that you have. You can cook pasta in butter, you can cook pasta in oil. It's the same thing. Now by this, I don't mean chemical processes that are perfectly formulated. For example, you get an egg, put it on your hair. The size of that protein is way too big to penetrate your hair shaft. However, if you hydrolyze the egg protein, it can be absorbed into your hair. That's a completely different process. I'm just talking about the raw things, okay? If you are allergic to shellfish, even if it's grinded up and blended and sifted through, I don't know what, and then mixed into your food, you're still gonna be allergic to it. Just because they changed what it looked like, it doesn't mean you're not allergic to it anymore. Hopefully these various examples kind of made it a little clear. 
Butters are not moisturizers. They are butters. Another thing is if you're wondering where to use a butter in your routine, I'm going to go more into this later on, but I notice a lot of people who are like, where can I use my heavy oil and where can I use my butter? It's either or. Like I said, heavy butters, butters are just oils. So let's say you want to use castor oil in your hair and you're like, okay, if I'm going to use some castor oil in my hair today, when can I use the butter? If you're using castor oil, you're not going to use the butter. If you're going to use the butter, you're not going to use the castor oil because it's the same thing. They are both heavy. They will both weigh your hair down. And first of all, you shouldn't even be thinking of using them but like that. But I will get into that again at the end. Let's get to the second reason why you don't want to use oils and butters, especially specifically heavy oils and butters like coconut oil when it's in its solid form, shea butter, castor oil, like you don't want to slather that on your hair. This is research from professionals, okay? I'm not just saying this from experience. I have experienced some of these things, but it is backed up by research I have got from professional hairstylists. So now let's go into depth of both butters and heavy oils. Why are they actually bad for your hair? So the thing is, if you slather your hair in butters and oils, and I see a lot of people slathering on a lot of sections of their hair, and sure, their hair might be long, but for me, it's not just about the length, which is why, like I said, I cut off four to five inches of my hair because I know exactly why. I delayed with my trim. That's beside the point. I don't want long hair that I can't do anything with. Like when my hair reaches my goal length, I want to experiment. I want to use more heat. I want to try more heatless styles. I want to try more wash and goes. I want to try more braid outs. I want to try so many more things. I might experiment with highlights. I might use the texturizer. Who knows? Right now, I'm in the growing phase, and that's fine if I barely wear my hair out because I'm in the growing phase. I'm trying to grow my hair. But I don't want to get to a point where I'm like, yes, now my hair is down my back. So now my hair is down my back. That's interesting. What am I going to do with it? It's maybe damaged and frizzy, and I can literally not do anything with it. It's just that I have long hair. Wow. No. I want to enjoy my hair. That is why I'm growing it out. I want to have fun with it just the way I have fun with wigs and weaves. So just because you might be watching someone who has long hair and they use heavy oils and butters, their hair might not be as healthy as it looks. So here's one of the things. When you slather your hair in oils and or butters, those are very heavy and they can create a barrier between your hair and moisture, whether that is water, whether it is a moisturizer. And just because your hair feels wet, it doesn't mean that it's actually absorbing the moisture like all the way to the middle of your hair cuticle or your hair shaft. It might just be sitting on the top and so it feels a little nice and moisturized and then like in a day or two it feels very dry again. That's because the oil is creating a barrier and the water or moisturizer cannot actually absorb into your hair. And the main reason why this is a big issue for naturals is because the average person's hair dries between three to four days after a wash or a full like you know washing moisturizing sealing whatever whether you seal the oil in whether you seal your moisturizer in with an oil or butter within three to four days the moisture is going to evaporate and so that's the point where you can go in and maybe just spray in a little water you know just rub in some moisturizer between your palms and just like refresh your hair a little bit the thing is if you coated your hair in an oil or butter it's just going to sit on top your hair might feel moisturized for that day or for a couple hours but after that it's going to evaporate and your hair will be dry even more and it will continue getting drier because once we reach the washing stage most naturals also don't use shampoos with sulfates or clarifying shampoos also we co-wash a lot i like to co-wash my hair as well so if you co-wash a co-wash no matter how cleansing it might feel it's not going to get off oil. And if it does get off oil, it's not going to get off all the oil off your hair. And also if you use cold water to wash your hair, the oil is probably just gonna be stuck on your hair or maybe it'll just be like moving around within your hair, but it's not actually going to wash off unless you're using a clarifying shampoo. And the problem with using a clarifying shampoo again is if you use oils and butter every single week and you use an extremely clarifying or stripping shampoo on your hair every single week, Either way, it's going to lead to dryness. However, if you don't use oils and butters, you can go ahead and co-wash multiple times. You can use a sulfate-free shampoo more often and your hair is going to be clean and it's going to absorb product very well and it's not going to be drying. The next reason hair's, hair butters and oils are bad for you is because they can create a lot of frizz. Now, you might be wondering, 
That makes no sense because when I put a butter on my hair, it is so thick and so heavy that it holds my hair together that it can't frizz up. Well, here's the thing. Your hair might not be frizzy on the first day, but once the moisture is out, your hair is going to be a huge ball of frizz because dry hair is always frizzy. It doesn't matter if your hair is curly or if your hair is straight, your hair will be frizzy, okay? You see, people with the straightest hair in the world still manage to make their hair look frizzy and usually what causes that is dryness and damage. So if you want to avoid that and you don't want your hair to feel disgusting, because honestly, very, very oily hair feels very disgusting because any like little bits of dirt and grime and dust just sticks onto your hair. And I don't think anyone actually wants that feeling of like touching your hair and it, your hands being like slathered with oil. It's not a good feeling, okay? Also, probably your bed sheets and everything are super messy. So if you're using that much to the point that it's clumping your curls together, I don't know where you're getting the money to use that much product, girl. Anyway, this is something that I feel like is not talked about enough. And this is the loss of curl definition due to the frizz from the oils and due to some sort of curl damage. The good thing is most of the time it's not like heat damage, so it's not going to permanently damage your hair. Once you cleanse your hair of all the butters and the oils and you try and do like at least a month routine of doing the same thing every single week, eventually you're going to start to see, you know, quite a good difference and your hair, your curls are going to start to bounce back. If you do this for extended periods of time, I'm talking about years, you could create some permanent damage. And this is where you might feel like even if you use the exact same product as a YouTuber with the same hair texture, density, and curl pattern as you. It just feels like your hair always comes out so frizzy. Maybe it feels a bit dry and your hair can't like form curls. That's because your hair is so frizzy because of the dryness. Your entire cuticle is becoming a little bit more rough. Also, the oils are coating your hair, preventing the products to absorb into your hair better. Thus, even when you put the gel and stuff like that, your hair doesn't clump together as much as it should. And I have had this issue myself because this is like my hair was twisted up. So my hair is in twists and I just untwisted them before this video. It wasn't, there's no defining product in here. It was just moisturizer. So obviously you can see my hair is naturally pretty frizzy. I don't have super defined curls. Even when I wash my hair straight out of the shower, my hair is not like naturally super defined. So I would have to use a product that can help clump my hair together like a nice thicker moisturizer and a hair gel that can nicely clump my hair together. That will actually help it work, but it works best when my hair is extremely moisturized. The drier the hair is, the more oil it has on it that's separating the hairs and not allowing them to clump together, the more frizzy and dry and a mess your hair is going to look. Okay, so now you might be wondering, okay, look, I have like, five different kind of butters that I have made and purchased. I have so many different oils. And don't you have a video all about how oils can grow your hair? Do you want me to just throw them away? No. Like I said in the beginning, the problem is not that the oils and the butters are bad. It's that you are using them wrong. Okay. That's the only problem. Those products are not horrible. You're just using them wrong. So I'm going to tell you what you can do with the products that you have right now, because girl, I like to be frugal. I do not throw things away. If I find a way to repurpose something, I will repurpose it if it doesn't work on my hair. Even if I find a skincare product that doesn't work on my face, I'm gonna use it on my body because I don't have the money to be throwing things. Trust me, I could be a billionaire. I will not be throwing things. I do not like to waste money. So let's get into how you can use these things. So you might have a favorite butter that's made with shea butter and a bunch of things. And you're like, this is amazing. And I've seen a lot of people that it works well for. What can I actually use it for since you're saying I shouldn't slather it on your hair? My favorite use I have seen for butters is to use on the ends of your hair because the ends of your hair are the oldest, most, most fragile, and the driest parts of your hair. So your ends can actually deal with putting a lot of product on there because also when you put something on your ends, it doesn't travel up to the rest of your hair. If it's gonna go off, it's gonna fall off the bottom. And your ends need to stay the most moisturized. Also, your ends are very easy to clean and to get product off of because it's right at the ends of your hair. So if you have to use a butter, I would suggest literally putting it on like this much, like 
a half an inch or an inch like the tips of your hair another way is if you twist or braid your hair you can like do the braid or the twist you know let's just do a little rough one here that makes no sense so you can do a little twist like this and usually there's that little bottom portion that might feel a little frizzy that might have split ends remember you cannot repair split ends you can only make them appear a little better so this will also help your split ends appear better so like when you twist your hair like this just this little bit you can get a little butter and just seal off the ends to make them look better and kind of feel a little hydrated for longer eventually that's easier to deal with even when you wash your hair it's just going to come off easier so if you have butters try and put them on your ends and then when it comes to oils how should you use your oils now my favorite oils i have done tons of videos on this my new favorite one that i've been using solely for the past couple of months is my moringa oil and i do have a video on how to make moringa oil i'll link it up in the eye right here so you can check out how to make moringa oil basically to make it i use some moringa powder peppermint oil tea tree oil res rosemary oil and olive oil so find a lighter carrier oil okay and then find essential oils because you see a way better difference from essential oils than carrier oils. And I see a lot of people saying that, well, essential oils are so expensive compared to carrier oils. Actually, they are not because we use way more of carrier oils and you only use very few drops of essential oils and they last for months. So when it comes down to it, essential oils are either the same price or cheaper when you add when you think of it in terms of the potency. So yeah, invest. I would say invest in essential oils and the ones I mentioned are the best ones in my opinion, according to my research and my results. So I would suggest you focus all the oils on your scalp and only put whatever is extra on your hands. And the reason I say that is because lots of products that we use in our hair already have oils properly formulated into the moisturizer so that it can absorb into your hair. I'm just picking what's next to me right here. I can't see anything else, but this is a leave-in conditioner I like. It's by Shea Moisture, and it is the silicone-free silicone miracle leave-in treatment. So let's just go to the ingredients. So we can see it says sugarcane extract, meadow foam seed, seed with marshmallow roots. And you'd be thinking like, oh, these will probably be in the top of the ingredients. No, most moisturizers always have water as the first ingredient. So let's go water, aqua. Then it's followed by glycerin. Then it's followed by caprylic triglyceride. Then it has castor oil. It has shea butter. It has soybean oil, glycerin oil, citrus oil, orange peel extract. As you saw, it does have a bunch of oils in it. And if you look at the back of almost any product you use from your deep conditioner to your shampoo, it does have some oils in there. So you're not abandoning the benefits of your oils. Just try and find products that already have your favorite oils formulated into them. And I don't mean find new oil mixes and butters that have your favorite oils formulated into them. I mean moisturizers and deep conditioners and products like that so that you're still getting all the benefits fits from your oils into your hair. And then I would suggest just focus the oil on your scalp. Please don't use butters on your scalp. I think I've seen people do this. I usually don't even watch people. I don't watch videos where people are using butters because it's not beneficial for me. I know I'm not going to use it on my hair, but I'm pretty sure I've seen people put butters on their scalp. Please do not put a butter on your scalp. I know in the beginning I said basically a butter and an oil is the same thing. But that heaviness of the butter, this is going to clog your follicles. You need to focus on using a light oil. The heaviest oil I would suggest is like an olive oil or maybe an avocado oil. That's the heaviest oil. And if you love castor oil, I would suggest you dilute it into the olive or castor oil. One of those mixes with the essential oils so that it can become lighter and easier for your scalp to take in without clogging your follicles because that can actually stunt your hair growth. And you'll be wondering, I'm using all these amazing expensive products and my hair is not growing. You might be clogging your follicles. So focus that oil on your scalp and whatever's left over on your hands. Maybe you could just like, you know, slightly go over, but mainly focus on the ends of your hair to kind of seal a little bit of that moisture in. That is the best way I would advise you to use them. Another thing is a lot of people mix in additional oils to your deep conditioner. I just, I don't know what to say with this one. The only, the only way I would say, okay, that's fine is 
I do like hot oil treatments, although I do feel like those should also be focused on the scalp. But sometimes you might feel like, you know, I just feel like my hair needs a little extra oomph. I'm going to warm up like my favorite oils, slather my hair in oil, and then the next day, and then maybe even add like some conditioner as like a pre poo Then you go ahead and wash your hair the next day. If you have to do that, that's perfectly fine. But when you do wash your hair, you have to use a clarifying shampoo or at least a sulfate shampoo so that every single trace of oil is completely washed out of your hair and you can proceed to use your deep conditioners and all that so that everything can absorb and like i said the barrier between the oil and your hair will not only stop moisturizer from working but it will stop every other product aside from shampoo which can try and penetrate that a little bit but everything else your deep conditioners all those products that we pay so much money for you basically be making them a waste because they can't absorb into your hair really well. And the best way you can see this is once you put the product on your hair, it just looks like white on your hair. It doesn't absorb. It just sits on top of your hair. And you're like, yeah, that means I put enough product. No, my hair always used to be white whenever I put product on top. And now my hair completely absorbs products that by the time it's time to wash out my deep conditioner, I literally cannot see it on my hair. My hair just looks like this, but wet. That's how you know your products are working. So if you feel like it's just because you have low porosity hair and the products just sit on top of your hair, try skipping oils for about a month and see your hair change. And lastly, I feel like I've mentioned this sort of, but I'm going to mention this again because in any other video where I've mildly referenced to what I'm talking about in this video, I still get this comment under those videos. And that is when I say something like, use the right moisturizer for your hair. Don't use tons of oil on your hair. I always see that one comment, I don't know if it's the same person, I don't think it's the same person. I always see at least one person say, well, can I just moisturize my hair with a butter? A butter is not a moisturizer. Just because it looks like a moisturizer doesn't mean it is a moisturizer. It is just a whipped solidified version of an oil. You still have to moisturize your hair. Say it with me oils do not moisturize hair if you want more tips or more videos from me in the future please let me know in the comment section below give this video a big thumbs up and i'll surely make more videos like this hit my face right there to subscribe if you didn't in the beginning watch the two videos on the side of the screen right here if you'd like to see any of my older videos thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next one bye